In the last episode, I introduced you to the formula for value at risk for a single position. One of the parts of that formula required you to calculate the standard deviation of the asset. So in this episode, I show you step by step how to do this. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Eventually in this series I'll be explaining how to measure and manage risk of an entire portfolio using value at risk. But we need to start simple so I'm going to concentrate initially on calculating value at risk for a single position. And one of the most important aspects of that is being able to calculate the volatility of the asset using the standard deviation. So let's take a look at how it's done. So, as I said, before we get into the slightly more complicated version of the value at risk calculation for a portfolio, we first need to be able to do this for one single position. And this was the formula that we used to do that. So here we have the Z score the standard deviation, and the amount invested. But in this episode, I'm going to concentrate on the calculation of the standard deviation, or effectively the volatility of the asset. So let's get straight into this with an example in Excel. So the first thing I need to do is obtain some price data for an asset to use in the example. And if you remember from before, I said that I'd be looking at a daily value at risk, which means that we need daily data to calculate the volatility. So I'm going to obtain this from the symbol manager in MT5. So I'm simply going to choose a symbol, Aussie CAD in this example, go to the bar data, and remember it's the daily bars that I'm interested in here. First of all, let's go back maybe 10 years so that we can get a really good sample of this so that I can explain the concepts a little better. But then when we calculate the actual volatility, we'll use a much shorter period. So I'm going to request it from 2011 right up to the current date. Okay. So with that displayed here, we can then just simply export that to a CSV file, which we can now open up in Excel. So when we open that data, this is what we get. So we just need to format this a little bit. So we're going to convert this information into actual columns. And we can do that from the data, text to columns, and delimited by a tab, as you can see here. And so we've got that information now nicely in different columns. Now, the only information that we need in order to calculate the standard deviation is the close price. So I'm going to remove all of the other columns here that we don't require. So we have the date, starting off with the oldest information from 2011, going all the way down to 2022. Now, you need to be careful here. It's not the standard deviation of the close price you want. It's the standard deviation of the daily returns. So let's quickly calculate those. So in this third column here, we're going to have the daily returns, and that is simply going to be the current close over the previous close minus one. And this is initially displayed as a ratio, which you can either keep or you can choose to show that as a percentage if you'd prefer. So that's calculated for the first day and we can just 
double click here in order to calculate that for each subsequent day, as you can see. Now, before we go ahead and calculate that standard deviation, I think it's worthwhile going into a little bit more detail about what it is we're actually trying to do and why it's the standard deviation that can help us. So to do that, I'm going to use a histogram of the daily returns, just so that we can see what they look like. So I can do that from the data analysis option here and request a histogram, select our input range, which is the daily returns, of course, all the way down to the bottom here. I'm going to let Excel decide on the bin range. These are the values that we're going to categorize these returns by. And this then creates an additional tab here, which we'll just call histogram. And so you can see you've got these different ranges of values with a count or a frequency of how many times that range was actually hit with the daily returns. And with that data highlighted, I'm just going to insert a bar chart. And so what we see here now is a frequency distribution. So this shows how many times different ranges of daily percentage changes occurred. The bars to the right show those days when they had large returns. The values on the left show the negative returns for the day. And then like we'd expect, there's a much larger number in the middle here that have small daily changes around that mean. So I'm just going to draw some lines on this chart to explain how the concepts of standard deviation are used in the value at risk calculation. So I'm going to come back to the original data here and I'm going to calculate a couple of values. The first being the average daily return So this is the, the mean return. And the next being the standard deviation. Now, one thing to note about standard deviation is that it's always in the same units as the thing that it's measuring. And so because these daily returns are as a percent, that's also what the standard deviation will be. And so we see here the standard deviation is 0.473%. And the mean return is very, very close to zero. So let's now draw these values on our histogram. So the mean is going to be right between these two values that we've got here. So right in the center of the histogram there. Now the value of the standard deviation was 0.473. So we need to do that 0.473 below the mean. So we'll just copy this line and put that, it's gonna be 462, just the other side of that line there. And then 0.473 above the mean is going to be just there. Okay, so this is only approximate, obviously, but that's fine because I'm just using it to illustrate the point here. Now, standard deviations assume a normal distribution. And although with price data and daily returns, this might not be precisely normal in nature, it's usually close enough and certainly serves the purpose of being able to use these values for the calculation of the volatility. But what do these standard deviations mean? Well, in that normal distribution, it means that 68% of the values will lie between this upper standard deviation and the lower standard deviation, leaving about 32% of the values in the left-hand tail here and the right-hand tail. And we can see that that's approximately the case here. 
So why is this a good measure of volatility? Well, the standard deviation actually provides you with a range between an upper percentage daily change and a lower percentage daily change for that 68% of instances. So the bigger that range is, the more the particular asset changes on a daily basis and therefore the more volatile it is. And of course, as far as the value at risk calculation is concerned, this is using that volatility figure to help us to associate a risk to a position in this asset. Whereas if you have an asset that has a very small standard deviation, it means that the daily changes in the price will also be small. And because that volatility is low, that poses a lower risk for a position that you're holding in that asset. So these are a couple that I've done previously, one for Euro dollar and one for the NASDAQ, with those standard deviation lines and the means drawn on each of the histograms. So let's just compare these. So the standard deviation of the daily price changes here is coming out at 0.36% while the standard deviation for the NASDAQ is 1.2%. So that's a difference of probably just over three times, which means that the NASDAQ is three times more volatile than the Euro dollar, especially during this particular period here, which was for 2021. Also, interestingly here, the mean is positive at 0.037%. So on average, the daily change is represented by this value. And it's not surprising that that's positive, given the upwards bias of the NASDAQ as an asset. So now returning to the previous Aussie CAD asset that we were looking at, this is the information for 10 years worth of data. But if we were going to calculate the current volatility for use in the value at risk formula, we'd want to use a much shorter time period in order to tell us what the volatility is right now. We're not necessarily interested in what it was doing five years ago, six years ago. We want to know what the volatility is at the moment. And so coming back to our original data, we're going to come right down to the bottom to the current dates here. Now, I always disregard the most recent day. And the reason for that is because if you're extracting this daily data during a trading day, then of course the day hasn't finished yet. So I like to remove this and just use the completed days starting from yesterday going backwards. Now there's a trade-off here. The more data you use, the more statistically significant the result that you'll get but the less data you use, the more representative this will be of the actual current volatility rather than the volatility as it was acting some time ago. So there's a bit of a judgment call here that you need to make. And in many respects, this is as much of an art as it is a science. But for daily data, I tend to find that using 21 days, which is effectively a trading month, seems to be a good compromise between those two. So if we start the calculation here and come down to yesterday's close price, these are the values that I'll use to calculate the standard deviation. So we do this in exactly the same way. And so we can see that that value is 0 0.0042. Let's just convert that to a percentage. So 425, and if we compare that to the value we had over the last 10 years, you can see actually it's very close, but the volatility at the moment seems to be a little bit lower than it has been historically. And so it's this value for the standard deviation of the daily changes that we'll now use within our calculation for the value at risk. Now, just bear in mind what I've said previously, that the period of time that you use for value at risk should really depend on what the duration of your trades are. 
So if you have trades that typically stay open for a few days, then a daily value at risk is probably the best for you. If, however, all of your trades tend to be a few hours, then maybe an hourly value at risk would be more appropriate for you. But in terms of how you do that calculation, it would be identical in terms of the process. The only difference is that you would use hourly data instead of daily data. And so you'd be looking at those percentage changes for each hour. Now, obviously, if you're an algo trader and you might be opening up many, many positions each day, then performing this calculation in Excel is not going to be feasible. You're going to want a programmatic way of doing this. And if you remember, I'll be showing you examples of code that will do this for you in future episodes, and you'll be able to use those yourself in your own scripts and expert advisors. So that's the first part of this completed. In the next episode, I'm going to be looking at the Z-score, and then in the episode that follows that, this amount invested, which if you remember, I said, does have a few challenges if you're using an account that uses lots in order to determine the position size, as opposed to a monetary amount, because the VAR calculation, of course, requires that monetary amount. And so I'll give you a technique that you can use to convert lots to a monetary value. And once we've done that, I'll then get into the code examples and I'll be using MQL5 for this. Okay, so please do give me a thumbs up if you've got value from today. But now until next time, trade safe.